Hey everybody, Larissa here from Beekeeping Made Simple and hi, it, it's been a while since I went live and really I just, I just needed time. <laughs> uh, my main focus is on selling my beekeeping classes and honey and so sometimes I just need to take a little bit of a break from all of the other things. Um, so I wanted to talk about something that uh, I, I get a lot of questions about from my students now, which is the people say, I just haven't gotten my bees to survive the winter. It's been a year or two or three, and they just never make it through. And there's just one thing that I feel like everyone talks about, you know, your bees need, you need ventilation in your hive over winter. You don't want to plug up the hive. Bees need to be able to come and go. You want to make sure you're absorbing moisture. You know, you want to make sure that you are insulating the hive. You want to make sure they have enough food. There's all those things that you'll see a lot of people talking about. And those are the basics to making sure your bees survive winter. But when it comes to your bees surviving the fall robbing, which might be bad or it might not be bad. It really varies year to year. Um, how rainy it was, how many flowers are blooming that fall and late summer. Um, the one thing that is really like the key to getting your bees to survive is the numbers. And that means making sure you have at least four beehives come fall. And this might sound awful, which is why I'm laughing a little bit, but it's it's true because this is nature and you can't prevent um anything bad from ever happening you you just never know if there's a wasp nest nearby that's going to attack your bees so when you have one beehive or two beehives and wasps find out about your hive and come in and destroy it now you only have one beehive you're going into winter with if you have four beehives the weakest or sometimes actually the one with the most honey on it is going to be the one that gets attacked. And you still have three beehives that are surviving. Um, I mean, this is kind of like the way people talk about war. It's just like when you have a whole lot, um, numbers matter. And so when you have a beehive and they're doing okay, but maybe not great, and you might not know that you have tracheal mites. And so this hive isn't going to survive the winter. But if you had four or five, six beehives, you have a much greater chance of at least one or two of these hives surviving the winter. So part of beekeeping is just that it is a numbers game. And everyone wants to start with one or two hives. They want to keep it simple. And that's fine when it comes to buying your nukes and your packages. Just buy one or two, but you should be open to um, picking up a swarm or maybe not doing a cutout at first. That might be too much. Going with your bee association and picking up a swarm um, or doing a cutout with your bee association, splitting your hives. So you don't need a ton of boxes. You just need at least one deep box, one lid and one bottom board for all of them. Um, and really a bottom board can be three quarter inch plywood. You just have to drill a three quarter inch um, hole into your deep box so that they have an entrance to get in and out of. Uh, someone asked, do you recommend during a dearth uh, and nothing to forage on to open feed using synthetic pollen? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by open feed. I definitely don't feed out in the open. All the feed goes inside the beehive. Um, I don't really like to use pollen patties. And really the pollen is for the baby bees. So at this point, there should be more than enough pollen in your hive that you shouldn't need to give them pollen. Uh, but you can feed inside the hive if the bees need it. Just uh, don't feed unless you have to feed. Unless you, like put a little bit of feed in there, see how they do, see if they're eating it. Um, they should have gathered up enough honey that they don't need to be fed, and that's just a personal preference of mine to not uh, always feed your bees. Uh, it just seems to be a common thing that beginner beekeepers really want to do because they feel like they it's necessary. Um, for me, the pollen patties, I've always found small hive beetles laying their eggs or just their larvae are always around it. Even if I just put a tiny little bit in. Now, I am in a warm climate, so 
uh, hive beetles and varroa mites are out of control here huge populations because we don't have a frost to kill them so we have a huge hive beetle problem and um so for me putting in pollen patties is just something that really will attract the hive beetles and give them a place to um hang out and thrive um so I don't recommend the pollen. The honey is what they need. Um, and you really want to be careful right now about putting liquid honey in as feed. You don't want it in once it's getting cold out and the bees are going to be clustering because, you know, for multiple reasons. One, because it's going to be creating moisture in the hive, but also that's not something they should be consuming because there's a lot of water in it. They need honey or candy um, or just pure white sugar. Um, but that's the main thing I wanted to mention in this video is that you can do, the beekeeper can do everything right and you still might have a hive that does not survive the winter or that gets robbed out by other bees and wasps and insects. So when you have just one hive, the chances that everything's going to go perfectly and nothing is going to happen during the fall robbing season or winter is um, at best 50-50 probably more like 70 30 that's how it is in in nature um so when you have two hives your chances are a little bit greater but personally i am nervous when i have a yard of fewer than five beehives and i've been doing this for 12 years i worked for uh, commercial apiaries for about seven or so i mean i have enough experience that it shouldn't make me nervous but it does it's it's hard to keep just one or two beehives alive and strong throughout the entire year. There's always things that are happening in your environment, you know, long winters, rainy summers, somebody spraying somewhere and you always have the population of a hive. So when you have an excess of hives, then you can always share resources. And when you lose a hive, it's not the end of the world you're not having to go buy bees you can always split hives share um brood and you don't have to go buying queen or at the very least all you have to do is buy a queen for i pay twenty dollars but we have a lot of queen breeders nearby even if she's fifty dollars that's a lot cheaper than buying a nuke or a package of bees so that is really the biggest thing to surviving the year and getting through this now if you guys are dealing with dearth, the other things to, de to do are to reduce your entrance. So you just have one small entrance for the bees to defend. If you have other cracks or holes and stuff in your beehive, make sure that they're plugged up and you just have one small entrance. Um, throughout the year, you want to make sure that you're not leaving honey, wax, feeders outside the apiary, anywhere around the beehives. Even if it was spring or summer, you're going to attract other bees and wasps and um, insects from throughout the year there. And they are going to remember that area or pass that information down to the next generation. And they're going to come back come robbing season in the fall. So make sure your apiary is clear all year round. Uh, that means old equipment and stuff sitting around. If it has, you know, wax and comb and stuff in it. Um, and you want to take off your excess honey. By now you should have harvested what is your excess and you're leaving them what you want as the their honey for the winter. In preparation for next year, plant fall flowers. The goldenrod is the biggest one in the United States because it produces a ton of flowers. The bees like it. It's a lot of nectar. It grows really fast and easily. It's just, uh, you'll find it along the sides of the highway and stuff. It's kind of uh, weedy. So you want to keep it, at, you know, m make sure it just doesn't get out of control in your, on your property. Um, you can put a, a wet, I've always used white, but it probably doesn't have to be white uh, sheet over top of your beehive, drape it over the beehive that can help deter uh, the um, robbers from coming because you know, bees have to leave the hive. And so when they leave the hive, if something is different from their entrance, they will take note of that when they leave. And um, when they come back, they'll be able to find that entrance uh, that, that they left from. But when a robber bee is coming, now all of a sudden you have this 
wet sheet over the hive and it can deter a whole lot of robbing and you probably will lose hives usually it's the weakest or the one with the most honey that maybe was even your strongest hive all year is the one that could get robbed out um so it does sound awful but when you have four or five beehives maybe you do have that one hive that ends up getting robbed out not because you, you you wanted it to be but it's almost like the sacrificial beehive that gets attacked but all the other hives survive in the end um and it doesn't make it any easier to see this happen to your bees but at the very least you have three other hives that are still going uh strong and are spared from all of these hungry insects that are all desperate to grab as much food as they can before winter time comes um Scott asked if uh, he, he did an alcohol mite test and his number was zero. So he wants to know if he should test again or leave it alone until April. Um, you know, that kind of, if I were you, I would do one more test, especially if, if you've been testing throughout the year and it's consistently been zero or one, then yeah, great. Don't, don't treat for mites. Everything sounds great. Um, you have some great genetics and you want to split that hive as many times as humanly possible. <laughs> uh, but if you haven't tested all year and maybe this is the first mite test you've ever done or, or you know, things could have gone wrong. Um, I would do another test just to make sure it wasn't human error on your part. Uh, and, and see, because there's not really going to be any drones uh, in your cells at this point in Pennsylvania in October. Um, so there's really no other ways to test. You can put a sticky board under the hive too and count. I, I hate doing that. It's uh, really annoying. But um, I would do another mite test just to make sure it wasn't human error on your part. Um Uh, someone uh, suggested using double bubble sheets uh, to insulate the top of the hives in cold climates. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways. Um, you can buy bee cozies. You can use roofing paper. You can um, try the double bubble sheets. It's uh, a lot of people think that the cold is what gets the bees, but uh, there's a lot of other factors that actually come into play because the bees do cluster up and the cluster gets tighter and tighter uh, the colder it gets and the bees go from the inside to the outside. And um, so you're not trying to insulate or, or keep the entire beehive warm. Really just that cluster of bees is trying to stay warm. So uh, on top of the insulation, you want to make sure you have some kind of thing to absorb moisture. Uh, a lot of people just buy a moisture board and put that underneath. So when the warm air, you know, um, causes condensation to happen, it's not dripping onto the cluster because water dripping onto the cluster is what can cause the cluster to die. Um, uh, on top of the moisture board, you also can just have plain white sugar instead of candy at the very top of your beehive. And then when water drips onto that, the um, the white sugar will absorb that. Uh, so, um, and then also make sure that you have uh, an upper entrance, not only for the bees to get in and out through the bottom and the top, but make sure that you have an upper entrance so that hot air can chimney up and out of the beehive. Um, bees, a lot of bees are going to be dying over the first few months of winter. And so you're going to have to keep on coming out and scrape out the dead bees through that lower entrance. And if there are days when you can't get out there, you really want to make sure you have that upper entrance so that bees can get out of the hive uh, uh, in two different ways. Uh, so if you have a candy board or if you're putting the white sugar, take a piece of wood and just put it in a corner or a couple of corners so that you're not blocking up um, that, that entrance from the top. Um, some people will use, uh, will like put a hole in their beehive uh, in one of the boxes. I mean, there's a variety of things you can do. Some people use an eek, which it looks like a bee box, but it's like this tall and it 
you can hold the candy and you can put an entrance in there. I mean, it's it's really not crucial how you do this. You just want to make sure that these factors are done. And you can do everything right and you still might not have your bees survive the winter. And some of those other factors that you aren't aware of is the fact that your bees could have had a rural mite infestation come summer. And if you didn't treat in the late summer, that's when the queen is laying eggs for the winter bees. The winter bees are bees that have a higher fat content, and they're the bees that are alive in the hive through the winter. And so if those bees had rural mites feeding off of them in their pupa stage, they might, they're not going to be as healthy, and they might not be able to keep the hive and help the queen throughout the winter time. So um, it is important to make sure that you have a low mite level come late summer. Right after you harvest that honey, you want to check for mites and put in a treatment if needed. And another thing is there could be tracheal mites, which is something that you don't actually see. And the only way to know if you have a tracheal mite infestation is to um, look at some bees under a microscope, which you can send your bees to some places, some labs to get tested. But um, personally, it's just been one of those things that I just found out when the bees uh, didn't make it through the winter. And so um, if you uh, have one of those infestations, there's really not much you can do about it um, at this point. It's just going to be a high that doesn't survive the winter. And so you can't prevent everything uh, from happening uh, to your beehives. And that's why it's great to have a few so that you can compensate for the loss. And I will tell you that for commercial apiaries, I worked for an apiary that had 4,000 hives and um, they had, and this is, this was Hawaii. So this was where they didn't even have a winter, but we do have hurricanes and droughts and really heavy rains sometimes. And um, a lot of rural mites and small hive beetle, and they account for at least a 30% loss without a winter. And a lot of experienced beekeepers in the cold climates usually expect of 50 to 30% hive loss. So as a beginner, you should be expecting at the minimum that much for your hives or a little bit more because you have a little bit more of a learning curve. So, um, and some of winters are gonna be worse than others. So you really wanna account for that and to, to just know the, that even the best and the most experienced people expect a hive loss. So you just can't put all your eggs in one basket and expect everything to go perfectly because you read every single beekeeping book out there and read a, watched every single YouTube video that there was. Um, so if anybody has any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, have a good week, everybody.